Welcome to Utah State University's Vertebrate Paleontology course. My name is Benjamin Berger, and in this lecture, I will highlight some of the adaptations in the more advanced archosaur hind limb anatomy, which help facilitate more erect posture from the more primitive sprawling posture of early diapsids. In other words, I will describe how reptiles went from sprawling animals to more swift runners. There are three principal changes that we see in the evolution of quicker terrestrial animals. And both groups of archosaurs, the curiotarsans and the avimetatarsalians, developed fast locomotion during the late Triassic that gave them an advantage. It was within the avimetatarsalians that we see the first dinosaurs which exploited a quicker running speed to become the dominant group of the later Mesozoic. The first principal change is found in moving the limbs directly below the animal so that the femur works like a pillar to hold the body more erect in its position. This required a major restructure of the hip socket or acetabulum. In the Curatarsians, the hip socket developed a lip on the dorsal edge uh, to provide a support for the body. In dinosaurs, the acetabulum is open and the femur projects into this opening, supporting a more upright body. Now, both methods allowed these advanced groups to become bipedal, running on two legs. But it was this open acetabulum that led to the origin of the more successful group, the dinosaurs. The second principal change is in the development of the ankle joint. Previously, we've talked about the difference between the crocodile normal condition, where the astragalus and calcaneum bones rotate in relationship to each other, and the cal cal uh, crocodile reverse condition, in which the astragalus becomes fused or non-mobile at the end of the tibia, and the calcaneum is reduced. This forces the astragalus metatarsal joint to serve as the major flexor of the foot, and it also limits the lateral or the back and forth motion of the foot. Both joints can be effective in running quickly, but the crocodile reverse condition limits movement of the foot into the sagittal plane, back and forth, allowing the metatarsal bones to become elongated and setting up a lever system in one plane of movement. A similar arrangement of the ankle is found in running mammals like antelope and in horses. The third principal change happens in the lever system and the ratio of the lengths of the hind limb bones. In animals that need strength, such as in digging, the femur is long, supported by a larger muscle mass with a shorter tibia and metatarsal bones. The distal bones are short and stout, and that gives them strength. In running animals, which need to move their limbs quickly, the lever system favors a shorter femur, but much longer distal bones, such as the tibia and metatarsals, connected with long tendons rather than big muscle mass. This longer distal limb allows for greater speed and increases the stride length as well. In fact, the ratio of the femur to the tibia has been shown to predict the running speeds of animals. During the late Triassic, many of the archosaurs demonstrate these changes, indicating that they were becoming swift running animals. It was in one particular group, the dinosaurs, that swift running would lead to their success during the Jurassic period to such an extent that they would dominate the terrestrial environment on the Earth for the next 144 million years. In the next video, we'll look at the origin of the dinosaurs. For now, sketch out the adaptations of the archosaur hind limb anatomy to facilitate erect posture and a swifter running from the more primitive, sprawling, slow posture of the primitive diapsids. 
Thank you for watching. If you'd like to learn more about Utah State University's geology program, check out the website geology.usu.edu or my own website at benjamin.berger.org. Links are found in the description below.